What's up guys? So we're back and we're gonna upgrade the Windows 95 gaming PC and I cannot wait, so stay tuned. Alright, so I've got a couple things and we're gonna knock them both out in one video instead of uh, spreading them out for no reason at all. Uh, basically I've got the DRAM, which is for the onboard video card. You can see there's two empty slots there. And that, like I said, that has uh, one megabyte of RAM on board, and then you can upgrade to two megabyte of RAM, so you got a total of two. But you have to upgrade both of these slots. You cannot leave one empty and fill the other. It just doesn't work like that. You have to put two in. So I've got two brand new SOJ DRAMs for this. So we're going to do that second. And first we're going to do the uh, cache memory, which is right there next to the processor and it's next to the processor because it allows you to uh, store application data and stuff like that for quicker access times and it's supposed to speed up your system uh, considerably well um, so I've got the whole uh, manual here so it tells you how to do everything and how to set the jumpers because you've actually got to uh, install the RAM and then you'll move on and you'll change the jumpers to position 2 and there are two jumpers right there. I think those are it. Nope, there they are right there. There's actually some jumpers there, but uh, the jumpers we're going for are right there. So those are for the cache memory. You can see they're in position one, which both of them are on this side. So we're going to move them over to this side and they'll still both be on the middle pin, of course. But anyway, uh, we are going to go ahead and start upgrading this and I've kind of got some stuff out of the way already so you didn't have to watch me take it apart again uh, I've got the uh, audio card out which is audio network card I've got the floppy drive out and then beyond that I've actually got two video cards on order because I need one for the Windows 98 system I'm building under there and then I need one for this so I've got a Voodoo 1 with 4 megabyte onboard RAM and then I've got a Voodoo 2 with 8 megabyte onboard RAM and I don't know which is going to go in which I'm hoping that the Voodoo 1 will work great in here and it be enough for this and the Voodoo 2 will go in the 98 because it'll get more it'll work I think it'll work better in the 98 than in here even though it will work with this um, and then beyond that I've got a processor upgrade in the works and this is a socket 7 and it's got a Pentium 100 megahertz processor in it and I will be upgrading it to the, the, the best upgrade you can do for this old Socket 7, which is a 200 megahertz. So I'm effectively doubling the megahertz, a 200 megahertz Pentium processor that has MMX technology in it. So it'll go on there. And then I've also got the heat sink and the fan for it that'll go on top because it will need a fan after that because it'll, it'll uh, get a little bit hot. You can see that heat sink there is a couple inches tall there. And uh, the new one will be about the same height with the fan on it. And it should be a great upgrade for this computer. And like I said, I've got the manual, so it's got the entire process to do everything in here. Because without this, I really wouldn't even know that I needed to change these jumpers without some extensive research. And there's not a ton of information on these online. Um, there's a little bit, but it's really old from like the 2000s um, for this kind of stuff. But it's, you know... Uh, just a little bit, but it's it's nothing like having this book. I don't need to look anything up. It's all in here. So I'm going to go ahead and set you up on the tripod. First, we're going to throw the cache, the cache memory in there. We're going to boot up the computer, make sure it reads that. And then we're going to put the DRAM in there and boot up the computer and make sure it checks that because I don't want to just sho shove both of them in there. Then if something goes wrong, I want to know which, which one it was. So anyway, stay tuned and we're going to get to that. All right, so I'm ready to throw this in. I have it checked it. It's the right amount of pins. It's the right um, speed. It's the right everything. So I just haven't actually put it in the slot to see if it fits. But this is HP 256 kilobyte sync burst memory cache, cache memory. And like I said, I've got two of them for a total of 512. So we're going to see for the first time if this fits because this is actually from 1995 it's in great shape I mean there's just not anything wrong with it but it is from 95 so it, it should fit but that's you know there's so much different types of this stuff and different brands different makers different models and everything so we're hoping that it uh, fits in there and I can see that the long end because there's more pins on this side than this side goes that way so we're gonna go ahead and put it here and push it in and it does fit. So let's go ahead and install the second one. Get 
this wire is in the way. Never had anything in this slot, I'm guessing, because it's pretty tight. But there they are. They are both in there. And I think they look great. Brand new. And this board is going to be awesome when it's maxed out. All right, so let's go ahead and stick the floppy drive back in there. I'm not going to screw it in there just because I'm going to be taking it right back out. But I do want to plug it up. That way we don't get any errors on that with it being unplugged. And then I'm also going to throw the audio card back in. So we don't get any errors on that. Then we're going to boot it up and make sure everything works. All right, everything is back in. So now I'm going to point you at the computer and we're going to boot it up. All right, so even after I said that in the video, I forgot to change the jumper, but I did change it now. And now we're going to boot it up. All right, so we've got some kind of memory memory error and we can look that up also in the manual if it comes down to it. But let's go ahead and make sure everything's set in the BIOS. I think that's down to advanced options, cache options. Okay, it is showing the cache. So we've got a 512 meg kilobyte cache. It's, it's system and BIOS enabled. So we the cache is working. Um, let's go ahead and go to the memory. The memory is still set proper, EDO and one standard. Um, let's just kind of look around here. Make sure everything is good. And this is. Okay, it's enabled. So the ra the cache is being recognized. Um, let's let me look flip through the manual, see if it'll tell me a 229 cache error. Okay, it just says uh, to make sure they're inserted properly and completely something about and yeah. So we they are inserted proper because it is reading them. So let's go ahead and exit the setup. We will save. And then see if we get the error again. Maybe it'll just boot into 95 and it'll be good to go. All right, it's about 20 minutes later. I am still getting a 229 memory error. And the memory, the, the cache memory is seated properly. Um, it is displaying properly and everything boots up fine. It's just given me that error. I mean, if, that, if if I if that's what I have to deal with, I'll deal with it and I'll figure it out. I the jumpers are set correctly because there's two jumpers and it, they're in position uh the first positions when it's 0 or 256k RAM. And then if you've got 512 and they're dual modules, you move both of them to position 2. So they are set properly. I don't know if there's anywhere in here that you can see in the actual system uh, what what the cache memory is but the BIOS is reading it correctly at 512k I just don't know if there's anywhere to actually read it in Windows 95 I mean it does use it because it's cache memory to help programs and stuff launch better and it does display it proper. I just don't know anywhere to find it in in here. So I'm going to at least play around with it for a while. Uh, since it's not giving me any error other than it there in the BIOS. So I think now we will move on to... I, can't, I really can't think of anywhere to see that in here. But I think now we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, putting the video memory in because we did see in the video memory that it currently is uh, one megabyte video memory. So now we're gonna go ahead and install these. They are 512 kilobyte each. So let's do that. All right, so there's our two DRAM slots for the video memory that we are going to do. And there's nothing super special about this. You basically just need to insert it the right way um, let's see if I can show you on these chips here. Alright, so on these chips here, there's only one way to insert them. Well, you can insert them the wrong way, but there's one right way. Uh, see in this one corner here, there's that notch. Now on the board, there's that same notch on the actual, on the actual pins in there. So I'm gonna, I'll pop this off here and show you. Okay. 
So there's only one way to insert these chips, and it's the right way, not the wrong way. Um, basically, you need to match in this corner of the chip laying here, there's a little circle, and on here, there's this edge here that's got like a, it's not a corner, it's like an angle. See on this one, it's the same way. The, the top left corner of both of those. So that's the way that you need to insert them. And that is the way we are going to insert them today. I'm gonna kind of blow it out here with my mouth, so hold on. Just to make sure there's nothing in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put them just like this. Oh, I see. Okay, so I was wrong. These go in like it's wanting to fall, so it needs to go in that side and then push it in from the other side. I was trying to insert it evenly, so I was wrong. I actually watched a couple videos, and of course it wasn't the same motherboard or these same chips, and they're a little bit wrong. So on this, one side tucks in, and then this side, you just press firmly into place, and there we go. All right, so there's both RAM chips installed, and they're both uh, firmly into place. So uh, let's go ahead and boot it back up. I need to throw the sound card back in and and then uh, once it's all good, I'll put everything back together properly. All right, so now we're gonna boot up once again, hopefully the last time. Now we're gonna check the video memory and see if it still gives us that 229 memory error. I'm sure it's gonna because it didn't go away. Oh, no, well, yeah, there it went. Okay, so it's still giving the same memory error from the cache. So let's go into system. Yep, now we've got two meg video memory. Check it out, guys. Two meg, 2,048 kilobyte video memory. So we effectively doubled it. And then above there, you can see that we do have the 512 KB cache. And then from there, I'm still waiting on two more 32 sticks of uh, system memory so we can effectively put it to 128 megabyte RAM. Then we will be upgrading the processor from 100 megahertz to a 200 megahertz Pentium with MMX technology. I think it's one of the very first ones that came out with the MMX technology. And that'll be super simple to uh, upgrade. There's nothing needed to change in the BIOS. You just basically upgrade it. So uh, let's go ahead and exit out of this. And let's boot Windows 95. I'll stick in a game and I'm gonna check to see if I notice anything different. I don't know that I will. Uh, we're gonna play Siberia and see what happens with it. So that's awesome that that, that went ahead and worked. And uh, now we've got double the video memory. And then the cache is, is showing up. Uh, it's just given some kind of stupid error, but it is showing up. So let's go ahead and I think Siberia was in here. Yeah, here it is. So let's open up Siberia, which is a 2D shooter. I don't know if it would be in 3D if you had a 3D card in here. Uh, it's only in 2D to me. And this is one another reason I don't want to use this monitor anymore because on these LCDs, like you can't really see it as much as I can, but all these square pixels really aren't square when they're on um, the normal monitor that they're supposed to be displayed on, not these new LCDs. So it, it'll look a lot smoother when it's on a CRT. I don't have the sound hooked up, by the way, so don't worry. There, There is sound. It's just I had it hooked to a different computer, and it's not hooked up. So uh, once this boots up, we will load into the game. I haven't noticed anything different. I really won't notice till I get in the game, I guess, because there is one, the place where we, and it's really meant to be played with a joystick, but we're doing it with a mouse and keyboard here. But we'll be shooting a little bit and uh, hopefully, see that looks a little bit blue to you guys. It's actually silver to me. And that that's pretty close to the color there. Um. I did already play a game, so maybe it didn't save. I don't think I can skip this. See, it looks super smooth to you guys, really, I mean, but it's not smooth to me. I mean, the gameplay is smooth, but the pixels are square to me. And see, his face doesn't look the right color on the screen, but it's the right color to me. 
See, he's got a bluish tint, but he's actually skin toned just like I am. Uh, let's see if we can skip this. Okay, maybe we can load my game. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There's my game. This has really cool sound, too. I just have the sound unplugged, like I said. I wish I would have left it plugged in. But I would probably get a copyright strike. Who knows? <laughs> Even though it's just explosions. But, uh... Oh, it... It... I don't know. It... It does feel better, I guess. I don't know. Really, I don't know if it's a, enough to notice. These guys just go by so quick. See, this is all 2D game here. I wish I had the 3D video cards that I'm getting and I'm waiting on them to come from eBay and then we'll we'll put them in and install the drivers and then we can play a, some 3D games like Duke Nukem and Quake and I've just got so many games for this system that we're gonna I'll show you guys all the games that I got too and uh, then we'll get some gameplay going hopefully I really need to get a VGA connector so I can actually record this gameplay I usually die when the drones come out. There's like drone strikes and stuff, so it shouldn't be too much longer. See, I can't... Whatever that was, he came in so quick I didn't even see him. And there's a radar and everything that shows me, but yeah. See, it's the that's those that get me. That's what was hitting me. I never noticed those before. There's actually uh, these things right here coming in the water. Those are the things that kill me. Okay, so anyway, everything worked out great, and I'm just gonna look up. I mean, I've got the manual here, but it doesn't say a whole lot. I'm gonna look up uh, what really happened. You know, uh, why that does that. Um, let's see if the control panel recognizes that memory for the system. I don't know if it shows it in here either. Let's go to display adapters and uh, properties. Memory range. Yeah, it doesn't uh, actually show anything in here about it, but we know it's there because it's in the BIOS, so we're good to go. And you don't have to install anything separately for it. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video of upgrading this uh, IBM PC. It's now effectively becoming a gaming PC. I mean, I've got tons of DOS games through this. Uh, so now I'm just waiting on a 3D graphics card so we can try to load some uh, 3D games on it, you know. So uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, I appreciate everybody stopping by and watching. And I know it's not my normal motorcycle videos and stuff like that, garage videos, but it's the winter time. My garage isn't heated. I do have a torpedo heater, but I really don't have any projects out there right now. I mean, I've got two great running bikes. So I'm just waiting for warmer weather to go get some rides in. I really don't like riding in the cold. It's not fun. Um, I, I've got plenty of cold gear to do it. It's just not fun. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Have a good one.